All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am Christina Johnson, a transformational nutrition coach and founder of the Emerge Weight Loss Method. And I'm excited to be here with you today for part four of the series that I'm doing this December on how to enjoy holiday food without going overboard, without getting to January 1st, feeling sluggish and guilty and heavy um, for, for all the food that you've been eating. And so uh, this is strategy four that I'm going to share with you today. If you missed videos one, two, or three, they are pinned at the top of the Clean and Mindful Eating Facebook group. If you go to the featured tab, you'll find all all three videos there. So feel free to go back and catch any ones that you missed, but you can definitely uh, watch this one first and you don't need to watch the other ones for this one to make sense. They're kind of all five, it'll be five different individual strategies. So today's strategy I'm really excited to, to share with you because I find when I'm working with women that this is one of the things that is most important in helping them figure out how to enjoy treats here and there without going overboard, without eating two or three or four. Um, they enjoy the treats more and they don't feel the guilt afterwards. So, so today's strategy that I'm going to share with you is going to be super helpful. Um, and then make sure you come back next week on Wednesday. I will be going live with the final video in the series, Wednesday at noon central time. And that one is going to be really important because we're going to talk about what to do now that the holidays are ending and how to get back on track with eating healthy. So make sure you mark your calendars to come back live next Wednesday. All right, if you are here watching, will you say hello so I can see who's here with me? And if you are watching the replay, say hello, put hashtag replay in the comments so that I know that you are catching it later. I really do appreciate all the, the engagement, the questions, the comments, and just even saying hello in the comments because it, it just helps me know, it, you know whether or not this is helpful for you and it, it makes it more enjoyable for me. So I appreciate any engagement. Hi, Anne, so glad that you're here with me live. All right, let's dive into today's strategy. So I've got my notes here so I don't forget anything. Um, and like I said, this one is really, really helpful in allowing you to enjoy holiday foods without overdoing it and without feeling guilty. And so today's tip that I have for you is to practice mindful eating. Um, you know, mindless eating is such a common obstacle for so many women. And it's one of the things that I think really stops people from being able to lose weight or it stops them from keeping the weight off. And so before I'm going to give you some ideas on, on practical ways to start implementing mindful eating and how it will benefit you. But before we do that, I just want to talk a little bit about what mindless eating actually is, because I think it's important to recognize when it's happening and how often it might be happening for you. So, so just for example, and let me know if you can relate to any of these, but mindless eating might be those times where you're, you know, walking through the kitchen or walking by the, the candy bowl at work, or maybe there's like this tray of cookies sitting out on the, the counter. And as you're walking by, you just kind of grab it and pop it in your mouth without even really thinking first. You know, it's not like you thought, hmm, I want a cookie, I'm hungry. But it's like that, that automatic impulse almost to just walk by and grab something. Or maybe you can relate to this one. It's the times when you're sitting on the couch and watching TV, reading a book, and you're, you know, you have a bag of popcorn or chips or a bowl of ice cream. And all of a sudden you get to the end of it and you realize that you don't even remember eating most of it because you were doing it so mindlessly. Or, you know, it could be the times where <laughs> maybe this has happened to you, where all of a sudden you realize you're just like standing in front of the refrigerator or in front of the, the snack cupboard and, and you're like looking for something to eat and it dawns on you, like you don't even remember thinking, I'm hungry, I should go get something to eat. But it was just like this, this impulse to go look for something to eat. Uh, but mindless eating also happens just when we're distracted. So it would be the times where you're eating while driving or eating while you're, you know, at your desk working or eating and playing a game or reading a book at the same time. So often we eat without paying attention to it. And so it's just easy to overdo it, to eat more than we need to, and to not even enjoy our food. 
So let me know. You can even just put a me in the comments if you have ever been guilty of mindless eating. I know that I definitely have before. Um, and honestly, even to this day, it's something that I think that we all, even once we're aware of it, we need to continue to be mindful of the, the mindless and mindful eating because it's something that's so easily to slip back into because we are, we're busy, we, we're doing many things at once. Uh, yes, and that is such a good a good point. Eating while preparing food. That is another really easy way to be mindless, to just kind of graze while you're cooking. Just, you know, pop a bite in here or there. So, so that's what mindless, mindless eating is. And it really is such a big obstacle to, to losing weight and to keeping it off because we end up just eating more than we need to and we're not even enjoying it. So... What I want to talk about, well, and actually, too, um, I just want to mention a couple of things. So it, it does lead to the overeating. When we're eating mindlessly, we just eat more than we even realize sometimes. So it's easy to get in a lot of extra food. But then also, I think what happens is that when we're eating mindlessly, we're just not enjoying the food. We're not even noticing it or tasting it. Like that example of sitting on the couch and like eating a whole bag of popcorn, you know, you, you didn't even get full enjoyment from it because you weren't paying attention. And so not only do we eat more, but I think that it, for most of us, will cause us to enjoy our food less. Um, and then we want more because we're not satisfied. So then we go back for seconds and thirds. But I think one of the biggest problems with mindless eating is also that while we are eating mindlessly, uh, we might enjoy the food a little bit in the moment, but then afterwards, what happens? You know, we, we have the, the feelings of guilt. We beat ourselves up. Like, why did I just do that? I was going to try and eat healthy today. So then it's all that, those negative thoughts that come flooding into our mind, making us feel bad and feel guilty. And when we feel bad and guilty, typically, then that's when it, we either just throw in the towel and feel like we've blown our diet or it just leads to more overeating, more mindless eating because we're in this negative cycle. And so really there is not much positive about mindless eating and lots of reasons to become a more mindful eater. So with that being said, let us now move into what it looks like to be a mindful eater. And so I will say first and foremost that it is a process. Eating mindlessly, eating while distracted, eating by impulse and, and habit, it is like this well ingrained habit that is most likely within you, probably from years, if not decades. And so becoming a mindful eater is not something that you just decide to do overnight and then all of a sudden you are this perfectly mindful eater all the time. So I just want to put that out there that this is, you know, I often say we want to practice mindful eating. It is a practice. It is something that we need to, to work on. It's a muscle that the more you do it, the easier and more natural it becomes. But just go into this knowing that most likely you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to forget to do it from time to time and it will take time. But the more that you do it, the, the easier and more natural it'll become. So I want to kind of give you this big overview of what it looks like to be a mindful eater. And so I think there's five key traits that, that mindful eaters, like if you see these traits in a person, you'll know that they're probably a mindful eater. Um, oh, and let's see here. Yeah, finishing your plate when you're in an interesting conversation. Yeah. Yep, that's another good point. Sometimes the distraction can be people. And so it's like, of course, we want to enjoy, you know, food with other people and enjoy conversations. And, and mealtimes can be this social thing, especially for families. And that's great. But also we do need to, maybe that's a time to just put the fork down while we're in the middle of the interesting conversation and focus on that and, and give ourselves a break from the food. But because, yes, you are so right. We can easily stop earlier if we're being more mindful of it. So thanks for sharing that, Ian. Okay, traits of a mindful eater. Number one, I think this is one of the biggest ones, and it is that a mindful eater makes a conscious decision to eat or drink something. And this is huge because how often do we eat just automatically or impulsively? Maybe you can relate to that. Like, do you ever feel like you're just an impulsive eater? Somebody offers you something, so you put it in your mouth. Or it's sitting there, so you eat it. It is, it's just, you know, food is good. It brings us joy and happiness and pleasure. And so it's easy when you see it there just to eat automatically, impulsively, without thinking. 
And so a mindful eater is someone who makes a very conscious choice. It is a choice and a decision to eat or drink something. Um, and so, you know, it, it is, it's something they put a little bit of thought into. Maybe they check in with themselves first and ask themselves, am I hungry? Do I, do I need to eat something? Is this particular food going to be worth it to me? And so, so there's this conscious decision to eat. And this trait of mindful eating pairs really well with the first strategy I shared in this series. Um, so you can go back and catch that in video one. But that's where I talked about giving yourself permission in advance to eat something. And so it's that just that conscious decision that you're doing. So that's trait number one. Trait number two of a mindful eater is that they pay attention to how they're feeling before they're eating, while they're eating, afterwards. And it's not just how they're feeling physically, but it's paying attention to how you feel mentally and emotionally as well. And so there's a few, few parts to this. First of all, it's, you know, before you eat, checking in with yourself and just asking like, am I physically hungry? Do I even need food right now? So that's part of it. But it's also checking in mentally and emotionally. And you know, if you're, if you're not physically hungry, just getting curious, like why am I wanting to eat right now? Um, yes, it looks good, but but is there something else? You know, am I stressed? Am I am I bored? And so so it's checking in with your your hunger levels beforehand, but then also while you're eating, it's paying attention, kind of like what you said, Anne. You know, being present enough with eating so that you can tell when you're comfortably full, so that you stop eating before before you get to you know past the point of fullness. Um, and then also mindful eating is noticing how you feel afterwards. Do you feel comfortably full? Do you stay full for a few hours? Did that meal leave you full and satisfied? Um, did it, did it, you know, make you tired afterwards? And so, so with a mindful eater, they are seeing these connections between how they're doing in their body, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and how food is impacting that. How, how their, their physical body and emotions are impacting what they eat and when they eat, but also how the food is affecting how you feel throughout the day. So it's, it's seeing that connection between ourselves and food. And I think so often we just are very disconnected from our bodies and from our emotions that we don't always pay attention to that. So that is the second key trait of a mindful eater. The third one, and this is a big one, is that they use all five senses while they're eating. And so, so this would look like, you know, you're, you, before you eat, you're noticing the food with your eyes. I mean, how many of you have ever gotten to the end of a meal and realized that you really didn't even look at your food? You just put it in your mouth. And so, so the first part of mindful eating is looking at your food, noticing the colors on your plate, the shapes, the textures. It means smelling your food. The process of digestion begins when we smell our food and see our food. That's when we start salivating. That's what helps us digest our food. So it's noticing the smell of your food. As you are chewing your food, it is paying attention to, to the flavors that you might have noticed or might have missed otherwise. It's really, you know, chewing well and enjoying every bite of the food um, and so so it's it's using your senses being fully present while you're eating and using your senses to enjoy the food and then the fifth trait I think that's number five. Oh, sorry I missed one number I skipped one uh, so number four would be eating without distractions this is a huge one. So, so for the most part, and I know it's hard, like we are all so busy, it is hard to always sit down and eat with zero distractions. And I get that, especially, you know, if you have families and kids, but what I do really believe to be true is that you could eat with fewer distractions. And so, you know, maybe that means sitting down while you're eating, not eating standing up or on the go. Maybe it means shutting off the TV and just putting some music on. Maybe it means, um, you know, not playing a game or, you know, on being on your computer while you're eating, but just allowing yourself to be present, to, to minimize as many distractions as possible, as often as possible. It's hard to do this one all the time, but to just reduce the distractions so that you can use your senses because it's really hard to use your senses to notice your food, to notice all the flavors 
if you're not, if you're distracted by other things. So, so it's eating without distractions, using your senses, and then lastly, it is to slow down overall and chew your food well. So, so mindful eaters eat at a slower pace. There, there's not this urgency to get through the meal. And when you're slowing down, chewing your food really well, you will notice earlier when you're getting full, you'll be more mindful to stop eating before overdoing it. Um, and it just it just allows you to enjoy the experience more and it helps your digestion to chew your food well. So those are the five traits of a of being a mindful eater. I would love to hear which one of those do you feel like would be most helpful to, for you to focus on first. Because like I said, this is a process. And so, you know, in the Emerge program, when I'm working with women, we like just do this like bit by bit throughout the program because it is it's it's changing these deeply ingrained habits. But let me know. I'd love to know which one do you think would be a really helpful place for you to start because this will tie in with our action step in just a moment. So if you need a reminder, the, the five traits are making the conscious decision to eat instead of eating automatically or impulsively. Number two is uh, paying attention to how you feel before and after eating. Three was supposed to be, I skipped it, but three was supposed to be eating without distractions. Four is using all five senses while you're eating. And then number five was to slow down and chew your food well. So let me know which one of those would be most helpful for you. And while you're doing that, um, I just want to just reiterate some of the, the benefits of mindful eating. Because I think as I'm sharing this, it can sound kind of simple um, and maybe even easy to implement. But I promise you that becoming a mindful eater really does benefit you in so many ways. And I hear this so often from women as they start to work on eating more mindfully. I think one of the biggest benefits that you'll find is that you start to enjoy your food more. You know, you will get to the end of the meal and you'll feel more satisfied because you tasted your food. You were present while eating it. So you actually get more satisfaction out of your food. And, and this is while you're trying to eat healthy and while you're trying to eat to lose weight, it will help you enjoy what you are eating more. And also it significantly, significantly cuts back overeating, um, the extra snacking, going back for seconds and thirds because you're enjoying your food, because you're present, you will find that you naturally eat less. So this is a great weight management strategy because you're cutting back how much you eat, but you're not feeling so deprived. You're actually enjoying your food more. So that is, you know, a couple benefits, but then also, especially tying this back into the holidays, what happens is that you can give yourself permission, going back to strategy one, give yourself permission to enjoy a Christmas dessert. You can be present, fully enjoy it, feel satisfied, and then just stop eating when you're done. And what happens is that you'll find that there's a lot less guilt that comes from enjoying those desserts when you've eaten them mindly and mindfully and giving yourself permission to enjoy them. So, so that, I mean, there's just, that's like the tip of the iceberg, but I find for many people, those are some of the best benefits that they find from eating mindfully. So um, I'd love to know, I'd be curious to hear what, like which of the benefits do you think would be most helpful for you? Would you enjoy the most? I would love to, to hear that. And, and most important is number one, the conscious decision to eat. Friend offered me another and another friend a delicious piece of homemade candy. My other friend said, I, I'll save this to enjoy later. Great idea. Yes. And you know what, Anne? I love that too because I think sometimes when somebody offers us something, there's also that feeling of guilt that comes up. Like, oh, I don't want to tell them no. They're being kind. They're giving me this. You know, they made this for me. And so we can almost like eat it out of guilt because we don't want to offend them or make them feel bad. And so I, I love what your friend said. Like, I'll save this to enjoy later. So she's being grateful for it. She's accepting it. And, and honestly, who knows? Maybe she will enjoy it later. Maybe she decides not to enjoy it later. But then she's also giving herself time to decide if it's worth it, if she wants to make that mindful choice. So that is, I, I appreciate you sharing that. That's a great little strategy there. 
Um, okay, so here's your, your action item, your challenge from this video here. So what I would first encourage you to do is to choose one of those five traits that I went over and really spend the next week focusing on that. Just thinking on it, reflecting on it, seeing how you can implement that trait over the next week. So like, and maybe if it's number one, making that conscious decision to eat, maybe it's just being mindful every time you eat and just trying to make more conscious decisions and also noticing when you might have eaten a little impulsively or without thinking. So so take one of those traits and I'm, I'm really encouraging you to focus on one because otherwise it's overwhelming and you're less likely to, to get anything done. So, so choose one of them to really think about and reflect on over the next week. Uh, and then the second challenge that I would give you is to give yourself permission sometime over the next week, probably like around Christmas, to enjoy, to make an exception, to enjoy a holiday treat or dessert, whatever it is, whatever you most look forward to, and challenge yourself to truly eat it mindfully. Savor every bite. Take your time. Put your fork down between bites. Chew it well. Just fully enjoy and savor that experience of whatever it is that you're eating and, and do it with joy and, and see if you can have less guilt afterwards because of that. So that's my, my two-part challenge for you. Let me know if you are in, if you are going to do either or both of these challenges. You can just let me know I'm in. Um, and I'll know what you're talking about. And yeah, and that's um, that's the fourth strategy. So make sure you do come back for week five be next Wednesday at noon central time because I will be talking a little bit about getting back on track after the holidays are over, which is an important part of this. And if you know that you want extra support and extra accountability, and if you want to know um, how to fully implement becoming a mindful eater and a clean eater, then I'd love to talk to you more about that as well and see if I can help you within the Emerge Weight Loss Program. So I will put a link in the comments if you'd like to book a complimentary consultation so we can talk more about your goals and see if the Emerge Program is a good fit for you. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for watching today. I am happy that you were here and I look forward to talking to you next Friday or sorry, next Wednesday. And so glad that you are in. I'll be excited to hear how it goes for you. All right. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful Christmas and we will talk again next week. Bye.